Any other discussion? Mr. Kremen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I had a question for the director, if he's willing to come forward. Uh, and it's in regards to the, uh, the lawn. Uh, you know, that I do have some concerns about the lawn. But I also have some knowledge about, uh, you know, the, the general consensus that uh, we should be ripping out the lawn and putting in native, native vegetation because uh, I remember having a fairly extensive conversation and discussion about this type of activity uh, with Craig McConnell, who used to be with Cooperative Extension for, I think, three decades plus. And he was of the opinion that uh, actually tearing out a lawn uh, would, would actually be more degrading to the quality of the water uh, because of, you'd be disturbing the soils, etc. cetera. Uh, and, you'd, and, and it would take a year or more for the whatever vegetation you would plant to take hold and pro provide a more stability and a uh, prevention of contamination infiltrating the lake. Uh, so I, my question to you is, were you planning on, on actually having a lawn that was going to be water? I mean, were you, if you left that lawn the way it is, don't water it, don't fertilize it, you know, just let it, what I do with my lawn, and I live on the lake, not too many hundred feet from where we're talking about, uh, and you just let it, you know, becomes moss and dandelions and you know, that's what it is. But it, it seemed that that would be the most lake friendly of all of the options. Now, you know, so what, what, what are the, are you planning on actually having a, uh, a nice green, putting green type lawn? First of all, this isn't much of a lawn. It's not a very good lawn. Um, the reason that we were leaving it there is because first of all, we don't have a development plan for it. I think in the long range, plan that was there, which is quite dated. There was an, a, a desire there to have a, a picnic area, open space area. Our intent was to basically go in there and, and maintain what's there because if we don't, we're going to get blackberries encroaching on that and it's going to have to be mowed a couple times over the course of the year. There's a separation between that and the lake. Um, you know, there's about 100 and about, roughly about 75 feet from the lake, but you have to get across the trail, then another buffer, and then there's a buffer of shrubbery and native plant material in there. And, you know, we constantly fight the battle of blackberries, as do a lot of residents. Um, so in this particular instance, essentially, we're just going to mow what's there in terms of putting in lawn, uh, any disturbance that we would have there in terms of bare soil, the, the road is a little rough in there from when the tenant moved out. You know, that would be seeded over and left as is, and we'd probably go in there once every three, four weeks and just do a quick mowing around there just to keep the other things down until we come back with a plan. Okay, thank you. Ms. Brenner. Well, I, I'm really surprised if he said that, but I'll take your word for it. I just... I wouldn't make it up, Barbara. I know, and I'm really disappointed that he said it. <laughs> so, okay. Um, it's so easy to take a lawn area and uh, put chips all over, especially for the, from the stuff that you take out. You can let it dry out. You terrace it, and you put in native plants. And what the native plants do much better than a lawn is they absorb all kinds of stuff, not just, you know, preventing erosion, but they actually can absorb phosphorus and other things a lot better than a lawn does. And it's a good idea, plus, plus yeah. I don't really want... It. I don't want a picnic area there. I, I mean, I don't feel like it's our job to bring more people into the watershed. Mr. Kremen, you look like you have a question. Well, I mean, that area right there is, I believe, the second most utilized venue in our entire park system. And to say that you don't want people coming there, they're, they're there anyway. I mean, there, it's... it's uh, you know, so I, and people do actually 
have picnics there right now as it is. I mean, and it, 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 they, it's just a convenient place for people to do those kinds of activities, and that's what they drive. They drive all the way from all corners of yeah. Whatcom County. From well, I'm talking about here in the county. They they, they drive from all over to come and utilize uh, one of the gems of our park system. I think I was the one this morning that raised the uh, the question of the lawn, and I'm sorry I did. Um, <laughs> uh, um, at, you know, after reviewing and listening to Mr. McFarland, it, it's clear this lawn is set back quite a ways from the lake. There's not a plan to bring the lawn all the way to the lake to, that would encourage geese. It, it, it's uh, it's in my mind, the, current, the plan that he just outlined to leave it as is until we get to the point where we want to install something that might be an educational display on best practices or something, I'm fine with it. So, Ms. Brenner. Well, I know I don't have to invite you over because you've already been there and seen it, but I, I know I'm not going to get this vote, but I invite anybody. I tore out a huge amount of lawn right on Deer Creek and... There was no erosion. I mean, you have to take care of it for the first year or two. That's what we've got the people who graduate from the Master Gardener class who have to put in their time anyway and other people like that. It becomes a jungle, and it does really good things about holding soil and pulling out any toxins that are in the soil. So come on over. All right. The motion's in front of us. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. So that passes six to one with Council Member Brenner opposed. We are on to other items from finance. And the uh, discussion of integrating the procurement of mental health and chemical dependency treatment services and approval of a request to amend the current North Sound RSN interlocal agreement to form a behavioral health organization was voted on and uh, recommended for approval three to zero, and I would so move. All right, that motion's in front of us. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. Next item was an ordinance establishing the Parks Special Revenue Fund. This is to create uh, a designated fund for uh, maintaining and uh, operating our parks system. And that was recommended for approval 3-0, to zero, and I would so move. All right, that motion's in front of us, and that will pay for mowing this little lawn out there. Just giving certain council members a hard time. Ms. Brenner. <laughs> oh, I would expect no less. Okay. Um, I don't support this ordinance specifically because it's taking money that was supposed to be in the uh, Conservation Futures Fund and putting it in this park special revenue fund, which allows for things to happen that would not be allowed in the Conservation Futures Fund, which was a fund that was voted on by the public. And I feel like if we're going to make... I'm not saying it's not legal. People keep saying, oh, it's legal, we can do it. It's not about being legal. It's about the, the trust of the public and what we do when we put a ballot measure on the ballot and they get to vote on it and that we're not going to change it. And I think we got quite a few more ballot measures coming up at some point, and I just think that we need to maintain that trust. So I'm not going to support it. All right. Any other discussion on this one? It's kind of stalling for Mr. Brown, but uh, I guess go ahead and call the roll. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? No. Red Brown? He's out of the room. All right, that passes uh, five with uh, one vote against Ms. Brenner, and Mr. Brown was uh, out of the room. Next item was an ordinance amending the 2014 Whatcom County Budget ninth request in the amount of $1,958,575. This uh, did include the approximately $1.5 million that would be shifted back from the Conservation Futures Fund into the Park Special Revenue Fund that we just created. Uh, the, it was considered uh, by the committee with, and recommended for approval with a 3-0 to zero vote, and I would so move. Ms. Brenner. Well, I'm not going to support it for the same reason I didn't support the ordinance before it. This is the one that will take that money that is in the Conservation Futures Fund and move it into this new park special revenue fund, which some of the things that this will allow that are not allowed in the Conservation Futures Fund, it's allowed to purchase all kinds of capital equipment and things like that that was never intended in the Conservation Futures Fund. 
and there's plenty of money in there to do maintenance. Somebody said, well, you know, if we're going to have parks, we've got to take care of them. Well, if you want to you wanna buy big boy toys, then we ought to do it out of the general fund and not out of the um, conservation, not out of moving that money from the Conservation Futures Fund. Mr. Brown? Um, um, pardon me, I understand you just voted on the previous ordinance, correct? Yep. Um, Madam Clerk, if you could record me as a yes vote for that. Uh, Mr. Chair, having voting voting on the uh, voted on the prevailing side, I uh, would ask to uh, reconsider the the uh, ordinance we just passed. All right, we're back to the ordinance establishing the Park Special Revenue Fund. We're going to reconsider that vote. I guess we have to vote on reconsidering. So, all in favor on reconsidering that vote, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Now we can reconsider. Is there a discussion on this again? You really want me to? No. <laughs> All right. I guess we can do the roll call again. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? No. Red Brown? Yes. So that passes six to one that time with Ms. Brenner still opposed. Now we're on to the uh, ordinance, which I think was a, there's already a motion in front of us. Uh, for amending the 2014 Whatcom County Budget ninth request in the amount of $1,958,575. I'm not going to put you through it again. It's okay. All right. So we've heard the discussion. I guess we're ready for roll call. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? No. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. So that passes six to one with council member Brenner opposed. Next item is for the uh, county council acting as the county flood control zone board, district board super, <coughs> district board of supervisors. It's the uh, third request to amend the 2014 uh, budget in the amount of $647,500. That is made up of uh, $600,000 for Swift Creek Bank stabilization. $20,000 to fund YRA 1 planning unit facilitation and $27,500 to fund additional aquatic invasive species program costs. The uh, committee considered this today. There was a motion to remove the $20,000 for the planning unit facilitation. That motion failed on a, on a uh, one to two vote to remove it, so it's still in there. Uh, finally, when the co uh, co committee considered the uh, resolution as it was originally presented with the funding for the planning unit in there. Uh, it was voted on uh, three to zero to recommend to the full council, and I would so move. All right, so we have the motion in front of us. Any discussion? So we're ready for the roll call. Pete Kremen? Yes. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. So that passes unanimously. And our last item was uh, a contract between the county and land development engineering for design assistance for Harborview Road drainage improvements in the amount of $76,355. The committee recommended approval of this item 3 to 0, and I would so move. All right. So we have the motion in front of us, and I think it's the, uh, th there was some additional information in the salmon color. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, on to public works. Request authorization for the county executive to enter into an interlocal agreement between Whatcom County and the Lummi Nation for construction, operation, maintenance, and repair of Haxton Way roundabout and associated public costs. I'm not going to say that word. It's too hard. <laughs> um, I just have a hard time with that word. Uh, this was like... One of the best votes we could have ever taken. The Lummi Nation is paying for everything. We're gonna we're doing our interlocal that will give us the ability to have it as a you know for the public, and we'll take over the maintenance and operation. But the whole thing is being paid for by them. So thank you to the Lummi Nation. So the motion from your committee was? Oh yeah, th is three zero to recommend approval. And you so move? Oh, yeah. All right. So we have the motion in front of us. Any discussion? 
All those in favor? Yeah. Say aye. Mr. Oh, Mr. Kremen. Yeah, and, I, I, and I'm sorry for we're, we're actually ahead of schedule tonight, so uh, we, we want to give we want to give the, the public their their money's worth. Um, <laughs> this really to, to concur with with Councilmember Brenner. Uh, this this project is is one of those glowing examples of of where the Lummi Nation and Whatcom County can work collaboratively and cooperatively and productively for the good of all, and uh, and I'm very pleased about it. Uh, one clarification that I'd like to make is that I, I believe that the we're all paying for. Uh, this roundabout, it's being paid for by the federal government, which um, we pay into. So uh, we're, we're paying for it, but uh, I have to give credit, and I, I want to give credit to the Lummi Nation for securing and obtaining the money uh, needed for the completion of this, this really good project that is going to improve the transportation needs of that area. Ms. Brenner. You are absolutely right, and since that is the case, it's kind of nice when some of that federal money does come back to us. So, That's again, right. thank you to the Lummi Nation. All right. We have the motion. Mr. Crawford. Well, I just should add, you know, looking at the location of this thing, I believe it's where the speed limit changes to 25 miles an hour, and so the the roundabout there is going to create some physical definition that makes sense. You know, it's kind of weird when you're trucking along at 50 miles an hour and you hit that, well, I think it goes to 35 for a short period First, and then 25. Yeah. But to have the defined area where it hits that 25, it's going to be a nice addition there. All right. So the motion in front of us. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. <clears throat> We're on to other items, it looks like, from planning. Thank you, Mr. Chair. In planning, we had an ordinance amending the Whatcom County Code regarding corner lot and through lot building setbacks. We discussed this at length and recommended approval 3-0, and I move approval. All right, so we have a motion in front of us. Any discussion? I guess we're ready for the roll call. Ken Mann? Yes. Carl Weimer? Yes. Barbara Brenner? Yes. Red Brown? Yes. Barry Buchanan? Yes. Sam Crawford? Yes. Pete Kremen? Yes. That passes unanimously. And next was an approval for the draft public participation plan for a comprehensive plan update. And we discussed this quite a bit as well today, and it passes three to zero with a recommendation for approval, and I move approval. All right. Motion to approve the public participation plan. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, the next item is not from a committee, but it's a nomination and appointment to fill one vacancy on the Lummi Island Ferry Advisory Committee. Applicants are Jim Dickinson, or Rima Blake, and uh, Byron Moy. And I think uh, Ms. Blake at the open session uh, asked to have her name removed. Uh, Ms. Brenner? Um, I'll move uh, nominating all of them, or except the two of them then. All right, Ms. Brenner has nominated uh, Mr. Dickinson and Mr. Moy. Any discussion about the nominations? I guess we can just uh, start at one end, and uh, or do you want to call the, the roll? Uh, okay, well, let's just start, Mr. Brown. Uh, sit here. Do um, you want me to start at the other end? Yeah, start at the other end. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Crawford. I'm sorry, a little clarification. Mr. Moy's application, is that in our packet? Yes, it's it? yellow. It was an addition. Okay. Thanks. You'll give me just a moment. Uh, yep. I'm sorry, I didn't. A couple of people haven't seen that. We're going to share the one around to uh, let people have a read. So just for clarity, we, we ended up with three applicants for the same position. But we have three applicants for one position, and one of them is asked to be removed. And I think we got emails saying they're all dandy they, people. They both so. look great. <clears throat> you 
Ready? Okay, Mr. Crawford. Dickinson. Mr. Kremen. I'm going to pass. Pass. Yeah. Let him, whatever. Uh, Ms. Brenner. Dickinson. I'll vote for Moy. I'll vote for Moy. 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 Did you want to register a vote? Mr. Well, uh, kind of doesn't matter. it doesn't really matter. So uh, I I'm going to, uh, I'll go, with, I'll go with Dickinson. All right. So it was four votes for Moy, three votes for Dickinson. So uh, Mr. Moy has been appointed to the uh, Lummi Island Ferry Committee. If I may just add, though, Mr. Chair, I was impressed with all three candidates and certainly hope the other two reapply. All right. Next one is a nomination and appointment to fill one vacancy on the Diking District Number 3 position, Number 3, and the applicant is Roger Bayama. Um, this was held from the last meeting because of a, 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 an apparent mistake on his application. Ms. Brenner. Okay, I called Roger. He has absolutely no financial ties with the county. He doesn't know how it happened. I said, well, why don't you just come in and fix it? And he's not very high tech, and he said, he w he said if, if they don't trust me, then I shouldn't do it anyway. And I do trust him, so I want him on there. So are you going to nominate him? I, yeah, I nominate him. All right. All right, so he's been nominated. Any d other discussion about Mr. Bayama? Well, I think to be, uh, just to correct uh, Ms. Brenner, um, oh, no, sorry, he didn't change it. That's right. Okay. okay. All those in favor of the nomination, say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes unanimously. We're on to our introduction items, and there's only one item in introduction, and it's packing houses and slaughterhouses. I move we accept the introduction item. The substitute. The, substitute, the substitute, which is the green version. Okay. Ms. Brenner, did you have a comment? No, just the substitute. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of introductions, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Uh, any other committee reports? Anything from Natural Resources? Mr. Buchanan. Yes. Um, this morning we had two great presentations. The first one was by the Washington Conservations Corps, and they introduced their crew for this year and uh, gave us a rundown of the uh, activities, the projects they're going to be tackling, and the thing that they've, things that they have accomplished last year. And the second one was a discussion about the geological assessment of Whatcom County. Um, Mr. Dan McShane from Stratum uh, came in and gave a geological uh, perspective, and we had several staff members from Public Works that, that talked about ongoing projects, and uh, it was just a great, great uh, presentation that is, is something that I really believe the public uh, needs to see. So we had it televised, and just to pass this along, it'll be on BTV Channel 10, it will start airing on Thursday, the, this Thursday, the 24th, and it'll air on Thursdays at 11 a.m., Fridays at 8 p.m., Sundays at 6 p.m., and that will be through May 4th. So it'll be for two weeks. That would be it. All right. Ms. Brenner. Yeah, this is other business, which is still part of the same items. Okay. Um, I went out to the Kendall uh, group meeting. What was it? Almost. Kendall Watch. Ken Kendall Watch. No, but I mean, I'm trying to think when it was, a couple weeks ago maybe. And um, it was a very interesting meeting, and there's a coalition out there, and they've been working really hard to get the speed limit changed between the school and north on Kendall Road there. And um, so they were interested in having the council support the request to the State Department of Transportation. The sheriff has already given his support, according to the coalition. And so thanks to our wonderful clerk of the council, I have a, a, a resolution here, real quick one I'd like to read. In support of reducing the speed limit for a portion of Kendall Road, whereas the East County Coalition for Safe and Healthy Communities successfully advocated for a speed zone <coughs> in front of Kendall Elementary School, reducing the speed limit from 55 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour and 20 miles per hour during school hours. And whereas the soon-to-be-built roundabout at the intersection of Kendall Road and the Mount Baker Highway adds additional concerns for the safety of the Kendall community 
and whereas a member of the East County Coalition for Safe and Healthy Communities has requested that Whatcom County begin the necessary process to request a reduction in the speed limit on Kendall Road, SR 547, through its intersection with Mount Baker Highway, SR 542, to South Pass Road from 55 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Whatcom County Council supports a reduction in the speed limit on Kendall Road from its intersection with Mount Baker Highway to South Pass Road from 55 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. Be it finally resolved that the County Council requests that the State Department of Transportation conduct the necessary engineering and traffic investigations required to move forward with reducing the speed in this area. That's it. All right. And I are couldn't you, get a hold of everybody. Are, are you moving to approve that this evening? I am. I move to approve this this evening. All right. Mr. Crawford. Well, this is uh, fairly typical of Councilmember Brenner. It's with the best of intentions and a good idea, but I, I, the devil gets in the details and I get concerned. I guess I'll go ahead and support it. You know, some of the things, the way you've written this, the soon-to-be-built roundabout at Kendall Road is going to increase safety in the area, not add to the concerns. Um, not if you're trying to cross. The, there's no explanation of why you want the area from Limestone up to South Pass to be reduced because there's no houses there. Um, and that's about a, at least a mile, maybe a little over a mile. So I don't understand why we would ask them to reduce the speed limit in an area where, you know, the, the real problem is where the kids come out south of Paradise and walk along the road where there's no no trail or anything. And I know, isn't Washdot working on uh, creating a separate trail? Mm -hmm. and, and again, I, you know, I think reducing the speed limit. The other thing is, uh, you know, there's going to be a cart in front of the horse issue here. Our engineer has presented at times... Uh, the idea that if you try to make a speed limit too slow in an area that uh, there are visual uh, cues and so forth for the drivers and straightaways, uh, it, it becomes sometimes, it can be more of a hazard as counterintuitive as that seems. All of that said, because I know Councilmember Brenner has just the biggest heart in the world and wants to help the community, and I do too, I will support sending this letter, but I would appreciate if you would vet things like this a little bit longer with the council ahead of time, uh, maybe bring it up one evening and say, let's do it in two weeks with your suggestions, um, that would be very helpful. But I, I doubt, considering that we've already got four council members sponsoring this, that uh, I would be successful in delaying this. And I do support the intent, so I will support the motion. Well, I'm not sure I'm going to support it because I wasn't asked whether I wanted to sponsor it or not. So. Well, I couldn't get a hold of you. You never call me back. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is that. Yeah. Mr. Brown. Uh, I actually share Mr. Crawford's concerns uh, in the speed. It, it doesn't strike me as, as, as there's something really pressing that, that has to be done. I would have thought the normal process was to put it forward and ask Public Works to make a recommendation um, and perhaps provide some supporting it's, information. Oh. Mr. Crawford. Since you responded to what I said, I, I, uh, it, it would be the state. I mean, she's doing the right way. This is the state highway. We don't, we don't do analysis. No, on no, no I know highways. that, but, but, but so public works could at least give us their opinion as to. They would say to ask the state. I mean, I, I think yeah. they would. Um, the, um, but I would be interested in Councilmember Brenner's response to why go so far north of Limestone. I do. Councilmember Brenner. Well. That was where they felt like it, and this is the coalition, and I do trust them. Plus, that road is dangerous anyway. Um, so I felt like that's a, I mean, I would have probably made it further, but I was compromising. So um, I think it's, a, it's very good. This is a resolution. It has no force of law. It, it's the kind of thing that the, we do so little for the Kendall community. Um, except for that great big East County Resource Center. But other than that, we really do very little for the community there. And they have lots of problems, and there are people on, the, on that road, and it's dang that road's dangerous. That was good. Mr. Kremen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, you know, I, and I, and I want to thank Council Member Brenner for extending the courtesy to call me up at home. And she does that on a regular basis, and it's... Believe it or not, we spend a lot of time on the phone. Uh, and most of the time, they're really good, substantive, productive conversations. 
And this was one of them. And I did ask Councilmember Brenner, well, why do they need it all the way to South Pass Road? Uh, because I do think that, yeah, you know, and I am a proud sponsor of, of this resolution. Uh, this is not, this is not uh, enforceable or anything. This is just a resolution uh, which makes me feel perfectly comfortable having my name on this and supporting this. But I do think, you know, we're more than likely going to get a report back, or at least it wouldn't surprise me that we get a report back from the Department of Transportation uh, if we're fortunate enough to get them to lower the speed limit. And I believe it should be lowered uh, to, to 40 miles an hour from the 55 in at least, you know, maybe a quarter mile past uh, the development there at, uh, you know, on the, the, the Kendall Highway, but uh, um, all the way to South Pass Road, I think the DOT is probably going to say, uh, they, they may come back with the rationale that was given by Council Member Crawford that when, when people feel comfortable driving at a, a higher rate of speed because the road conditions are such that you, you feel comfortable, people are going to have a tendency to drive what they feel is safe. And I think that may be one of the, uh, you know, one of the responses that we get back from DOT. We'll just have to wait. But I do think that the, the underlying intent of this resolution is a good one. And we'll fine tune it and and try to uh, respond positively to the wishes and will of the people in the the greater Kendall area. All right. And all joking aside, I really appreciate Ms. Brenner bringing this forward. Um, the thought of having a 55 mile an hour speed limit through the middle of one of our urban growth areas where people for a variety of reasons are forced to cross and walk along the side of the road doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So. The, you know, whatever we can get out of DOT to address this, I think it's a great idea. Mr. Brown. Um, the second whereas, I also agree with Mr. Crawford's comments, roundabouts improve safety. Uh, they're, they're a traffic calming device. I understand Mrs. Ms. Ms. Brenner's comments about pedestrians, but that's just really the way they think it's constructed. Ms. Brenner. Well, I've walked that roundabout by, over by the college um, and Sometimes I feel like I'm taking my life in my hands. I think it's it's great for traffic calming. I don't think it's great for being, especially because where those th those crosses are, they're so close to when you just get in there that it's really hard for people to be able to see when people are crossing right there. So I don't think it's all that safe, but um, I think this will add to the safety. I'm leaving it. All right, we have the motion to approve the resolution in front of us. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes aye. seven to zero. Um, Mr. Mann had a report from Planning Committee, I believe. Yep, thank you, Mr. Chair. We had a very interesting report from staff uh, on our five-year population growth monitoring report. And just generally speaking, um, the last five years, the growth fell off a cliff and throughout the county, and Blaine, for example, was 80% underneath their growth allocations um, from five years ago, 219 uh, population growth versus a pr prediction of 1,012. So I just, I thought that was really interesting. The, the data countywide was about a 40% deficit um, from what we projected five years ago. Obviously, we know with the housing crash and the recession that that was a huge part of it. Uh, the only really interesting thing that I noticed was that uh, the cities, especially Bellingham, were at about 50% of their deficit, uh, of their projection. Um, and in the non-UGA areas, the unincorporated areas, the rural areas, they fell about 20% short, roughly speaking. So I still think our cities need to do a better job of uh, attracting that growth and um, striving for that. And we've got our chance in 2016 with our comp plan update, so we'll just look forward to that. Thanks. 
All right. Any other other business? All right. Reports from council members, Mr. Brown. Nothing. 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 Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, this is the last meeting that we're going to have before our property taxes, our first half property taxes are due, and I just want to uh, extend a reminder to the people of Whatcom County that um, they need to get their property taxes in by the deadline, and that's the, the last day of April, and that's 30 days if I remember the, the poem right. Uh, and uh, and I have seen it when I was the county executive. We had one major taxpayer in Whatcom County that got their taxes in one day late on May 1st, and it cost them forty thousand dollars in penalties. So uh, just I just want to give fair warning to the the people of Whatcom County and they, they work very hard for their dollars and those property taxes are uh, fairly substantial although I do want to at this time also uh, let people know that the checks that you write to our esteemed uh, treasurer Mr. Oliver uh, only about between 10 and 11 percent actually goes to Whatcom County, in spite of the fact that you write it to Whatcom County Treasurer. The, about 90% of it goes to other taxing districts, at, and especially the state of Washington gets over, considerably over half of those property taxes, in spite of the fact that you feel like you're sending it into Whatcom County. But please, uh, get those property taxes in. Don't procrastinate till the last day or, and then forget and then you wind up paying the penalty which is just adding insult to injury so mr. Brown uh, I would be remiss if we didn't take this opportunity to recognize Martha Blakely who is retiring between now and the next council meeting and I'm not sure what the right format is but I just like to personally record that uh, the council's appreciation for her service perhaps even to the vote <laughs> Yes, Martha's uh, one, of, you are, Martha. one of the staff people that works for the council and has been here for a long time and wish her well in retirement. Mr. Crawford, any reports? Anything else for the good of the order? We are adjourned.